Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking AI generated hyperlapse effect using Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to download our clip. So I just found this hyperlapse clip online and the link will be in the description. You can download it and then we'll take it into Premiere Pro. So here we are in Premiere Pro and the first thing that you need to do is you need to import your clip to get started. Cool, so now that my clip is here, all I need to do is drag it to the timeline. Now, if you need to go and change any of the sequence settings, you can, but I'm happy with 3840 by 2160 at 24 FPS. So now what we need to do is we need to move forward in time until we are happy with where we want the hyperlapse to actually start or you know the AI generative fill. So I'm going to start it probably around here. I'm going to press M to set a marker and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and move forward in time 20 frames. So that will be 5 frames, that will be 10, that will be 15 and that would be 20. So I'm going to put another marker there. So now what we need to do is we need to export that little section out. So I'm just going to press I on my keyboard over there and then I'm going to press O on my keyboard over there and I'm going to move back one frame so it gets to that marker point. So now what we need to do is we need to export that. So if I just go up to export, so here we are in export and I'm just going to call this, you know, let's say hyperlapse. I've already made a folder. We don't want to export it as a video. We want to export it as a PNG sequence over here. So once you've got all that, all you need to do is then just click export. Cool, so now once it's exported, we need to open up Photoshop. So I've got all of my files here. So I'm just going to highlight all of them and I'm just going to make sure that I open it up in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I can see all of my images here. So we're going to start on the first one and I'll show you how easy it is to actually use the AI features in Photoshop to create the effect that we're going for. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to come over here and you need to grab the quick selection tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a rough selection around that circle bit over there. Now I don't want everything to be highlighted. So I'm just going to hold uh, option on my Mac and I'm just going to drag around and deselect the areas that I don't want. Once you're happy with that circle, you just have to hit that generative fill. And if you don't want to actually search for anything, you can just click on generate. So now what Photoshop will have done is it would have created three of these separate images. And if you don't like any of those images, you can always generate it again. Now, once you're happy with the image that it's generated, what you need to do is you need to export that. Now, there are two ways that you can export it. You can go to file export and then go to export as, or you can use the shortcut, which is command option shift and W. Then this window will pop up and what you need to do is you need to save them all in a sequence. So if I just click export, now I have a folder called AI and what I need to do is I just need to replace that zero zero with just zero. And then if I press save, I would have saved the first one. So now what I need to do is I need to do that for all of my 20 frames. Cool, so now once you've done all of that, then what we need to do is take it back into Premiere. So here we are in Premiere Pro. The first thing that we need to do is we need to import our sequence. So if you just right click, go file import. Now you can see here that these are all my clips. All I need to do is just select the first one and then go and make sure that it's an image sequence and then just press import. Cool, so now I have my clip in here and what I need to do is I need to drag it to my timeline. Cool, so that looks pretty good, but it's just a little bit too fast. So what we're gonna do is we are just going to export that clip. So to export the clip, what we need to do is we just need to clear the in and out markers. And then if we just go to file export, now I'm going to change this and I'm going to make sure that I'm using Apple Pro Res. I mean, but you can use H.264, 265, whatever you want. And I'm just going to uh, save it to my directory. Cool, so now that I've exported it, I need to import it back in here. So I'm just going to right click, go import. And here is my clip over here. So I'm just going to right click and then I'm going to go new sequence from clip. And now it happens in a new sequence and it's still too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the frame that it starts on. So it's going to start there. And I'm going to press C to bring out the razor tool. And then I'm going to move to the ends of that little thing. So probably around about there. And then I'm just going to move this a little bit back. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and go to speed and duration. I'm going to change that to probably around about maybe let's say 60% and I'm going to change it from frame sampling to optical flow. And so now if you've done that and you join your clip back up together, so now what will happen is it goes and it hits that little thing and then it moves on. Now it will get a little bit slower during that time. So you can always play around with some of that percentage. So for example, if we went and we went back and went to speed and duration, and maybe you made it to like, let's say 75% and you change it back to optical flow, depending on your clips, you know, how it's going to look is going to be totally up to you. So that looks pretty cool at 75%, but please play around with some of those uh, settings as well. So now the only other thing that we are going to do is I'm just going to um, find where this clip actually ends. So, so the clip probably ends there at that frame over there. So I'm just gonna cut that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to nest that. So. I'm gonna just nest that. So now that I've nested it, all I need to do is I need to duplicate this clip. So if I hold option and drag, and then what I need to do is I can go into speed and duration. And then if I just go to reverse speed and make sure that you pick uh, optical flow. So now what happens is it gets to that point and then it goes in reverse and we have the reverse of that uh, AI animation as well. So that looks pretty cool. So now the final thing that we can do here is we can just dress it up a bit. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna press okay and I'm just gonna drag this to my timeline. The next thing that we need to do is we need to search for an effect called Lumetri Color. And so once I double click that or if I drag it to my adjustment layer, then if I go into creative, I have options to all these uh, looks. So if I go down here and the look that I'm going for is going to be the SL Gold Rush. Actually, we'll go with the other SL Gold Rush and you can see the difference that we have. So I'm gonna leave it at 100% because I think that looks pretty cool and it makes the colors kind of pop as well. So, and the only other thing that I added in this clip was some noise. And then once you're happy with your adjustment layer, then all you can do is just export that clip. So anyways, guys, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching your short tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next video.